Welcome back to those that are with us online and here tonight and those that haven't attended. We're glad you're here. <laughs> just, I'm just going to have Jim open us in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. And our, many of our hearts are still heavy from what happened this week in Boulder, and we just lift up the families, the friends of those victims. And uh, we just declare that uh, we, we know that the end of this life on earth is not the end. And so we just take a hold of that and, uh, and rejoice. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this time that we have together tonight. Let all the words be your words. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you that you've brought those here who, who you want here. And uh, whether that's in person or, or online, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, let's start with, if anybody needs a lesson that's online, would they go ahead and chat to Christy so she can get it to you as soon as possible? We're going to do a lot of prayer time tonight, pondering on some things I think the Lord just wants to reveal to all of us, us included. So it's going to be a little laid back more tonight. So let's look. Remember also that these are tools, okay? We're just doing a practice run of a couple things tonight. These are to be used in the future for other people as well as yourself. And Jim and I use them all the time. Uh, so we're going to start with the Father's Ladder. Does everybody have the study for tonight? Okay. I was, um, the first time I did the Father's Ladder, I was just amazed on how much breakthrough I had. It was just like, oh, really? Is that? why this happened? Is that why I'm having difficulty in this area? So we're just going to begin. We're going to go, the Father Ladder is a tool, which we talked about. It's a framework. It's not a formula. The goal of this tool is to help connect us more fully and relational to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We all want that, right? The premise is that our family of origin plays a significant role in shaping how we perceive and therefore relate to God. I had no idea when I heard this lesson the first time. It just rocked my whole boat. I'm just going to be honest with you. The connection. Experiences with our earthly father can produce limitations in the way we relate to the heavenly father. Experiences with our siblings can produce limitations in the way we relate to Jesus. The experience with our mother can produce limitations in the way we relate to the Holy Spirit. So the process is, what is my current picture of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Remember, we are praying revelation and wisdom for tonight. Because this is pivotal to hear only what the Lord is telling you, not what you think up here. Gnosko, as we learned last week, okay? So what do I need to forgive my dad, my siblings, and mom for? Okay, if you've been in a lot of trauma with your parents or siblings, I don't expect you just to forgive them tonight through these lessons. It's a process. And as we will continue on weeks forward, you're going to understand forgiveness is probably in almost every lesson. But we just need to ask the Lord to help us walk us through. You know, I was physically abused. Did it take instantly to forgive my mother? No. It took a long time. And so just realize these are processes. Only deal with what the Lord is showing you tonight because he just wants to open some doors that are really pivotal for you. Okay, and then before the seven weeks are over, everything's going to kind of come together in a whole picture for you. So what is the new picture God wants to give me of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? We're going to go through these questions, and I told you it's going to be a little bit different tonight. 
and we're going to relate it to where it stands, and then we're going to listen to music again, and we're going to take ink pens and maybe do a little work, okay, in the area that only the Lord is calling you to. Okay. And just to give you my perspective on, on kind of what Pam was talking about, Pam was talking about being physically abused. It doesn't always look like that, and, and it's important to, to understand when I was growing up, it, was, it wasn't abuse, it was more like neglect. <laughs> it was more like everything was at arm's length, you know? And, and that, that, I can, because of this teaching, I can see now why my relationship with, as it often talks about, uh, well, as Pam read, the father, obviously, we think of our earthly fathers as kind of the example. And they're humans, they're right, so they're going to fall short. Our mothers, more like the Holy Spirit in terms of emotion, in terms of, of love, affection. And in my case, I had an older brother who was six years older, and we were just never close. And I was never that close to him, and, and I, I, it dawned on me not that long ago that that's affected my relationship with Jesus because he's our brother. He's our brother. And if we put <laughs> what we've learned on earth onto what's of heaven, we're going to get a at least incomplete and probably totally inaccurate picture of who the Trinity are. Okay. Another example would be as I was raised Baptist, very male. My father was an elder at our church. Well, because of a lot of things, I really thought of God as a whip and chain. So it took me a long time to understand the, our loving father, who he really is. We all have different examples out there, and we're just kind of giving you a few, so we're just going to work through the questions. So we're going to go slowly because they're kind of heavy questions, okay? What does the Heavenly Father think of me? What do I think of the Heavenly Father? I've never, before we took these classes and we were taught how to teach these classes, these were not even questions I ever even thought of. They weren't even my vocabulary or my mind thinking. So what does Jesus think of me? What do I think of Jesus? What does the Holy Spirit think of me? What do I think of the Holy Spirit? This is just going to give you a really, really deep relationship with God. All three, the Trinity. So some of the uh, attributes that we think of naturally that come with the Father like I said, our, our earthly father is kind of the example, but a father means what? Security, identity, provision. The son, we think of our, our siblings, companionship, friendship, communication, peer acceptance. The Holy Spirit, a nurturing, comforting, teaching mother. And please understand, this, this isn't trying to project a gender <laughs> on the members of the Trinity. It's just like uh, the attributes of each one can help us to understand kind of the, uh, the function of what they can be in our lives. And if you did not have, if you were adopted for any reason, it's whatever you perceive your father to be. It doesn't have to be your birth father. Right. It can be who raised you. It may be a grandfather. It may be a grandmother. So you, you have to put in the pieces here because we can't cover everything because we don't know how you were all raised. So. <laughs> and if you're an only child, you had best friends, hopefully. You had cousins. 
somewhere along those lines. Who did you hang out with? Okay. So we're going to get the worship team back up here again. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray over you, but you're not going to be able to get to all three of these, okay? It's just, this is a process and a tool. So we're going to ask the Lord to show you what he feels like is weakness or inadequate in any one of these areas. For example, my mother. I never understood why I didn't have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit until I did this. I was like, oh my gosh. Because <laughs> mom and I did not have a good relationship. And it just opened up my eyes totally. So I want you to just pick out an area, and we're going to sing a song. And we have ink pens, so there is a little work for you to do. If you don't have an ink pen, I'm going to give you one. And just write down what the Holy Spirit is showing you tonight. At the end, when we're offline, we, will, we can share, too, you know, if we have the time. But right now, we just want to really intensively, intensively see what the Lord is is asking of you right now in any of these areas. And what you do is you go down here. I'll just use the Spirit as an example, okay? Picture the Holy Spirit and describe him. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? Where are you in the relationship? Ask, is there anything I need to forgive for my mother for? And just if you, you're like me and it's been difficult, then just Ask the Lord, what can I do? Can you heal my heart in my mother's area for forgiveness? Or if you're ready, come on, let's do it. You know, tonight's the night. Holy Spirit's here strong. And then you ask, are there any core lies I believe through my experience with my mom? And the Lord will show you that. We are going to break up in some groups tonight and discuss some of this. We're going to go through generational blessings, but we are going to discuss it. So you will have time for us to pray for you. Reckon them dead with Jesus on the cross. He died for them. Give them to him. Ask, are there any ways I've learned to protect myself from fear or in pain? Oh my gosh, if there's not someone in there who hasn't done that, I'm, I'm going to be shocked. It's just, we protect ourselves. Mine was manipulation total manipulation. Mine was, I, I was the successful, this is before Jim and I were married, I was the successful salesperson, and oh my gosh, everybody thought I was the greatest person in the world. Behind the scenes, I was an alcoholic. I lived in pain and fear, but I covered it. It's all different for you. Holy Spirit, then we ask the Holy Spirit, thank you that in Christ they are no longer mine, and release them. Holy Spirit, I thank you that in Christ I can release the fear and the pain. Release it. If you need to walk around, I mean, my flagging is my, it's my heaven, you guys. It is my heaven, but you need to find your heaven, what it is. Jennifer says her dance. If you need to grab my flags and hold them, hold them anytime. There is release in it. There's freedom. Holy Spirit, what do you want to give me in exchange? That's a big one. Holy Spirit, what is the new way you want to show yourself to me today? Again, take only one area. You're not going to be able to get more unless he just wants to do a great thing tonight, and that's possible, you know, but I just want it to ponder. I hate that word, but pondering. You want to pray over us? I'm just going to throw in one last thought here. That second last bullet point where it says, Holy Spirit, what do you want to give me in exchange? So this is, this is huge because if we're releasing something, if we're letting something go, something's going to take its place. And if we allow something other than the Holy Spirit, God, to take, to take that spot, it's not going to be something good. Um, uh, a lot of Eastern religion as well. What facets of their, of their upbringing do they need, do they need to release? Thank you, Holy Spirit.
What does the Father think of you? What do you think of the Father? What do you think of Jesus? How does Jesus think of you? What do you think about when you say Holy Spirit? How do you see that? How does the Holy Spirit see you? something we just all need to practice whenever you're this is something we all need to practice Uh, I mean even for me going through this there are reminders to me that I still haven't released things and I just want to be 
complete whole with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus to the point we can see that glory and we can see beyond. Wouldn't you love to know how what Moses, when he went up on top of the mountain, what he felt? Wouldn't you just want some of that? And this is really all we're doing, just getting rid of stuff. It isn't ours anyway. We shouldn't even have it. So we'll discuss it a little later when you guys, um, we break up. I'd love to hear some of your testimonies. Okay, now we're going to move on to something totally different. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Same, only different. So each of us has gifts from God. This next part, this next section, is called a generational blessing chart. Each of us have strong points that uh, we may use and we may not use. We may nurture them, we may not. But this is designed to, to help you to get an idea of, of where God has placed you in terms of, you know, how did, how did I get here? <laughs> so, again, this is, this goes, uh, I think it's, I think it's three pages worth. It's, it's rather detailed, but it's all good. So, are we going to yeah, take a little bit of a it's, yeah, what's weird is when Jim and I first took this course, and it was generational curses. Okay, we don't have curses. We live in Christ, and he died for us. And I love this new concept. You know, you kind of look over all the list, and you will be shocked at your ancestors, what all they did occupationally, uh, ministering, creative ideas. Jim's can draw. That comes from someone in the past. And that's what we want to rise up with you tonight. It's like, oh, I thought about doing this. I've thought about writing a book. I've thought about doing something. But I just don't know how to do it. But this awareness is going to wake you up and say, oh, I have this. We have it anyway if the Lord is asking us. But I just think it is awakening in your mind to see, wow, this is in my line. You know, just go back as the Lord, as far as the Lord will show you, okay? Just fathers, mothers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers. I don't know. Some people know our trees very well. Jim happens to have a sister that knows her, his family tree all the way back as I can imagine. So who knows what you know? Uh, like, like as Pam was just saying, this in this same teaching, this used to be called generational curses, and you know you've all heard people say it. Oh, that that guy's no good. His old man was no good. You know, his dad before him was no good. You know, we we place we place curses on people, but and this is just kind of taking the flip side of that. Because we can't let those curses go. They're, they're, they're just conjured up anyway. They're not in the DNA. But this flips it around and says, what was good in your family line? And all of us have something. <laughs> so this will be the last moment we take to, we're, I want you to check Mark, Okay. What is the Lord showing you? And they're going to play a little longer again and just check everything off that you, the Lord is showing you, okay? You may believe it, but it doesn't matter up here again. What is the Lord showing you? What does he want to pinpoint tonight that maybe you know nothing about? I mean, it talks about families, values, relationships, professions, professions restoration, talents 
I think if you let the Lord work through your mind, you will be shocked of what you check off. So again, we just pray over our minds. We pray anything of distraction in this room and online at home with people that we just break it off of you right down the name of Jesus. And we ask for clear minds, that the veil of your minds are going to be removed, that you hear clearly in what he wants for you tonight.
Thanks, you guys. You're done now. We get all. We're, we're finished. Thank you so much. Okay, hopefully all of you have had a chance to at least look through this. And again, we're not, we're not demanding that everybody have it finished. It's a, it's a tool. Take, home, take it home with you, pray over it, see what the Lord tells you. What I'd like to do, though, is for all of us to pray this prayer that kind of wraps this section up. And it's the next page right after those uh, those three pages with all the check marks on them. Should we have? Why don't we stand up and we'll all recite this prayer? Father, thank you for your son. I want to identify with him anew on the cross, since this is why you sent him. I want to experientially know myself in him on the cross and allow the old man to be fully released to him as it is truly already dead. I reckon it dead already today. I thank you for his resurrection. I am a new creation. I am. You are helping me to learn and grow up into what you created in Christ, true righteousness and holiness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you that I am your child. Thank you that I get to be led by your spirit into your fullness. Thank you so much. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. okay. You can sit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so this next section is we're going to kind of build on what we were just doing. We're going to talk about Jesus' blood. He's a perfect man and our inheritance in that. We're going to talk a little more about generational blessings. Our DNA codes are merely instructions for behavior, desires, and functions. God's original design, no matter how humanity messed it up, is restored in Christ. In Ecclesiastes 3, it says, He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also set eternity in their heart, yet so that man will not find out the work of which God has done from the beginning even to the end. I know that everything God does will remain forever. There is nothing to add to it, and there is nothing to take from it. For God has so worked that men should fear him. That which is has been already, and that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by. So all the original designs of God begin with God and are powered by God. All the original designs of God are eternal and unchangeable. And that includes us. All the original designs of God are the foundational and governing principles of God that are embedded in the tapestry of creation. The original designs of God were designed to bridge the gap between heaven and earth and to bridge the gap between eternity, time, and space. The immutability and unchangeableness of the original designs of God 
form the foundation for any form of credible science. It would be practically impossible for scientists to attach any credible scientific device to unpredictable laws of nature. Devil is a prisoner of sin. He cannot get out. That is why it is so important that he convinces us that we are also stuck there. God's foreknowledge is only found in God. It is the spiritual element behind the immutability of the original designs of God. John 17 says, and this is Jesus speaking, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love. What do you know of that eternal nature of God in you? Okay. So that's just a very brief information on Jesus' blood and his inheritance. Now, the next step we're going to do is basically we are going to go offline, but I want to give some instructions first. Those online, there are like two pages of prayers that don't pertain to you, all of them, so read them carefully. If you've got someone with you, pray with them. And this is going to just open up more in the lineage of who we are, lineage of who we are. Basically, we are of Adam. Nothing else in between should be there, okay? I love my mom and dad eventually. <laughs> but uh, in be, you know, that's, that's not who we are in Christ. We are Christ's DNA. So what we're wanting to do is just anything in between there, we're just going to break off of us and be free so we can continue to walk in how Christ wants us. So everybody at home or who'll be listening to this later, please go through the prayers. Jim and I are still available. If anybody has questions online or in person, just pull us aside, email us, or you can call me. I mean, that's very easy. I, I, I have no problem with anyone calling me if you have questions. We haven't ever opened that up last week, but I want you to know if there's anything that comes up. And if I don't know it, Christy and Steve will. <laughs> that's a good possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? All right, so thanks for joining us at home, and we'll see you all next week. And we just bless you. We praise your name on high. We continue to speak identity in you as the Lord shows you who you are in Christ. And as you went over all the descriptions, I pray that the Lord opened your doors to something new and exciting you do have the DNA of Christ. Thank you very much.